All right, welcome back to Plone Conference 2021, track two, day two, with our, I believe it's our last talk today. With me is Flip McFadden, uh, who has been at Radio Free Asia, a Plone developer for 10 years, working on many sites at uh, RFA. Uh, he's the author of several Plone add-ons, as well as contributor to Plone Core. Um, it's been fun to get to see uh, flip periodically online, although, I mean, originally in DC, I think that's the first, the conference where I met you. But uh, with us today, he's going to be presenting uh, Plone Output Filters and Transform Chains. So please take it away. Hi, um, welcome. This is, my name is Mike McFadden, and thank you, Kim, for introducing me. Let me go ahead and share my screen. And there we go. I hope that all looks good. Um, yes, and this I actually like drew in um, portal transform chain at the end, just in case we have enough time to talk about it. But really, I do want to focus on the, the plone output filters. Um, so first, let me just introduce myself. Um, I am Michael McFadden, I'm known as Flip MCF, and I work for Radio Free Asia. And Radio Free Asia is a, a news organization um, nonprofit news organization to bring um, news into closed countries, um, like mostly you know China um, and Tibet, Vietnam. Um, we also run also Benar News, which brings it to Southeast Asia. Um, but mostly Radio Free Asia is is where I got my clone um, my clone introduction and where I've worked on all my clone shops. We're also in the middle of a uh, a transform of our logo, so. This is the new logo we have for our site. Um, so let's just jump right into the problem. Um, so what we have is a database full of stuff, mostly like right here, we're gonna talk about the um, um, text fields or maybe just our entire plone response to the, uh, to the browser. And we want a way to hook in and kind of change the HTML um, or I think one of the greatest examples was uh, links. Um, I, in a past life, I worked for an organization that had link IDs on every single link, and the search engine optimization team said you can't do that, um, but the tracking team said we had to. So we provided Google. You know, we, we just ran our our entire web page through something that removed all the link IDs from all links and presented that to Googlebot, while giving everybody else, you know. But that, that was long, that was in the 90s. Um, now we have things like the tiny MCE images. You know, when you put an image in the tiny MCE, the safe HTML transforms, um, mosaic blocks, um, that's all done, you know, by intercepting a request or response, doing something with that response, and then sending it on downstream. Um, and that's what we want to solve. So there are two ways that Plone solves this. Um, I'm going to see if I can talk about both of them, but I'm going to focus mostly on output filters. Um, if there's anything you can take away from this right now, it's that clone output filters deals with fields, specifically fields with mime types like text fields, rich text fields, um, anything you're probably going to put a rich text widget on. Um, if your field has a mime type on it, it's probably going to use clone output filters. Um, and then there's Plone Transform Chain, which after the entire template's assembled, the browser view's rendered, the template's rendered, everything's done, and we're just about to deliver it, like Z Publisher is done. Um, we're gonna grab that response and do something with it, the entire document. Um, that's a little bit easier of a use case to deal with, uh, actually in Plone, so we're gonna focus on output filters first. Um, and one of the most obvious use cases that we're using for clone output filters. Oh, my gifts a little bit blurry, but what we're going to do is create an image here and steal a caption straight from Wikipedia. And upload our image and we have now created a an image in our classic clone install. And then what we'll do is we'll go over to this news story and add this image directly into our text field. So this is not new. This is stuff we've done all the time. 
Um, what's going to happen though is oh, let me wander around here and actually find there's my image. And notice I'm not going to fill out anything here. I'm just going to check this box saying use the description from the image, and we insert it and and just play with your your editor. Now, there is no caption here on the editor, but once you save it, magically, the caption comes from the actual image. So that is not stored in a text field. Something magic happened there. And what actually happened there was Plone Output Filters grabbed that text field value and did something to it. So right here, I'm gonna run to my Zope debug prompt or my, um, my, my uh, Python console and look at the story and say, what is its text value? You end up with this, hey, I'm a rich text value. You can, you know, if you've seen this error message before, good job, you you are using Plone. Um, and if we look at the raw value of, we can see that all we have is an image in here. This is a little bit of an, a different, I didn't want to put the full text of that example on here. So this is my adventure time story and it has just a picture in it and that's it. Um, this is the raw value that's inside it. But once it goes through a magic output filter, you end up with this really nice wrapping of a figure. My image gets linked and I have a fig caption. Um, and something happened between the, the, the raw text and the output text that, you know, it, it, it's really cool. Thank you, Plone. Um, what are you doing? So that was like kind of the first questions I had when I first approached Plone. I was like, there's magic going on here and I don't like magic. I need to know how every single thing works. I'm kind of OCD about that. So we found out, of course, you know, some of you know, um, maybe some of you don't know that this is Plone Output Filters, the captioned image. So the nice thing about this and Plone Output Filters, what I really like about how this was done is they made a browser page, a browser view just for the captioned image. So if you don't like that image template, and as you saw that the, the caption text is, you can't really make a difference between the caption text and the, the actual text of the story. Like there's no difference there. You maybe want to style that. Well, you can style with CSS, but if you really want to change the template itself, the template is right there, caption image.pt, and a simple JBot override will do you most of the time. Um, other advanced, more, more advanced usage is to actually override the caption image view, which you can do with overrides at CCML or a browser layer is what we use at RFA. Um, because we actually put a new field in our images called copyright. And we need to show the copyright with all of our images. So we actually have a, a new view that actually takes the copyright and puts it in the template. Um, so moving on with that, you know, let's let's talk about like ways we can actually use the output filters. So what happened to us is we had the request come by that we want to be on Google AMP. RFA wants to be on Google AMP. Um, let me just skip forward. You know, what is Google AMP? Um, Google AMP is a special web page for Google. Um, so when you're on your mobile phone and you do news searches, we are a news organization and we put out news stories. When you search Google and you click on that news tab, you get the results and there's Radio Free Asia coming up as number one result for Uyghur. Um, and when you click on that, you end up with this other view. And this view is not coming directly from our website. This is actually a cached copy inside Google, which is Google AMP. So it's basically the same. It's, it's our story. It's another view. Think of it like that. Um, but we have to write our HTML a little bit differently. So if we want a captioned image in this AMP view, Google, you read the Google specs on AMP and it says, well, please use the AMP image tag. We are not going to use the image tag. We're going to use AMP image. And so now we've got a problem. We have to provide special captions to AMP different than what we're giving to the rest of the world. Um, thank you, Google, for making our jobs hard, but we get paychecks now. So what, of course, the first thing we approach with this, you know, forget about output filters, is just we need a view. Um, so right here, we just go quickly. We set up a new view on our story that says I'm the AMP view, and I'm going to use an AMP template. That solves 
pretty much most of the problem we have now, a new view of a story that's for AMP. But the actual captioned image is done a little bit differently. We're actually going to change the caption image captioning. So when we get that caption or we get that text field from the story, it's going to use a different template to render it. Um, and the way I do this is I don't know if this is right. And I would love to be in a Jitsi and ask about this part because I'm going to use a browser layer, but I'm going to actually going to tag, going to make my own request. I'm going to tag, my, I'm going to say, hey, I am an AMP request and then register a caption image um, template and view for that Google AMP request. And what that does is it's when the, the request is tagged with Google AMP, it finds the layer, it finds the, the name, clone, output filters, caption image, finds my overridden one and uses my new template. So everything's fine. Yay, we got different templates for caption images, one for AMP, one for the story, and then we hit a problem. Um, we have a cache. And I didn't know this cache existed until I started playing with this. So what's going on is whenever you do a transform on a text field, and this is, we're doing text fields. Text fields have a default output MIME type. Um, that MIME type is text XHTML safe. Um, and whenever you ask for it, the first request gets to transform, the next request doesn't. So what's going on is that if I request AMP page, AMP view first, that caption image is cooked and given to everybody else. And vice versa, if you hit, if you restart your, your server and you hit that desktop story page, then you go over to AMP, AMP starts complaining that your HTML isn't right, even though you put all this hard work into a new caption. So how we're going to get around this, um, and because I had to go out to the clone community on this and say, like, what is the best way to approach this? And I got I got the answers, create the new mime type. So what we're going to do is, well, for, here's the schema for the text field, by the way, um, just to go into a little bit of what Portal Transforms is actually doing. Um, when you use, this is taken directly from the rich text behavior um, in dexterity. Um, the mime type is text HTML, text HTML safe um, output. So when we actually ask for our field, we're going to get a X HTML safe underneath the covers when you run story.text.output or just call dot output, you are actually calling the transformer inside products portal transforms. And this is actually what's going on under the covers. So if we ask for a different MIME type, we're going to get a different cache key. And that's what we do. Um, uh, again, portal transforms. What is portal transforms? It's a system from transforming from one type, MIME type to another. Um, and there's a screenshot of maintaining it in the ZMI, which is, yeah, there's not much you can do in the ZMI, but it's there. Um, so how clone, I've already covered this, how clone output filters works, and this is hijacked directly from the documentation, is it creates the new MIME type, X clone output filters, HTML, um, a transform for it, which um, basically does your image captioning, um, the null transform, and then a transform policy, which is the important part, and it tells product portal transforms that if you want an X HTML safe, you must go through output filters. And that's how Plone Output Filters has hooked itself in into Portal Transforms. It's actually hooked itself into the XHTML safe transform. Um, if you want to get around Output Filters, ask for something other than XHTML safe, and none of this will run. So mostly we're just defaulting on top of defaults on top of defaults. Um, um, I don't recommend, unless you know what you're doing, getting a different MIME type than XHTML safe. But... Um, that's all we really needed to know about um, how the output filters was working to get ourselves a little bit of a different behavior, uh, a little bit of different, just avoid that cache. So what we're going to do is just create ourselves a new mind type, XHTML safe for AMP. You know, just come up with a name. It's That's all it is. And now when we get our text through our view, we're actually going to manually call the transformer. And instead of going just text.output, we're going to get that text and throw it into the transformer and ask for safe for AMP. And now we have two cache copies. Um, text HTML safe is giving our normal desktop view for everybody and safe for AMP is giving our rendered text. 
So, and their cash still, we didn't have to turn off the cash, which is kind of a bad idea. Um, especially for, a, um, and to wire this up, you basically just use the clone output filters pattern. They've already figured it out for you. You just repeat it. A new mime type, uh, a new register transform, um, and then a new policy that says a HTML safe for AMP must run through HTML clone output filters. Um, same thing as how XHTML safe is set up. It's the same thing. All we're doing is creating a different key for it. Um, I have an option here to take a code tour if we wanted to. Um, I don't want to really, I, I can do that in a Jitsi. I don't, I don't feel comfortable just switching my screen around right now to do that. Um, but now that we've covered how portal transforms is actually working on fields. Um, I want to also go into transform chain, which is all the fields are done. Now we're going to mess with the entire document. Um, again, I'm just going to, they don't, they, they say it the best in the documentation. So I'm not even going to try to put it in my own words. Plone transform chain provides methods to modify the response of a page. Um, before it's returned to the browser. So what's going on here? And this is an easy transform. Again, I'm going to steal straight from the documentation. They have the best. Um, here is a neat way to take your entire clone site and capitalize every single word on it in case you want to do that. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe it's a request for management. I don't know. I want every, I want my web page to yell at me. Um, and this is how you do it. Um, this is a pretty easy transform. Uh, this is the example transform, and it's, it's just calling upper on the result. What comes in is a string. What goes out is a string, and you implement I transform and throw a ZCML adapter in there, and boom, you're done. It's not hard. Um, I transform though um, can be confusing because both transform chain and um, portal transforms both implement an I transform, um, which can make it a little bit confusing. So uh, if you do a code search for I transform, you're gonna find a lot of stuff. Um, see if you can, you know, just search for it. And then I actually say, if you wanna know how um, plant trone, plant -trone chain runs, you can do, do a search for the transform chain interfaces. But I do want to talk about when you get into transform chain, you're going to find out that the, you know, a lot of Plone uses the transform chain already. Um, and there's some st standards that I've kind of gleaned from it. I haven't actually read these anywhere. Um, but, you know, maybe I, I can improve this slide a little bit more after talking to some more people. But um, what you really want to do is if you want to play with your XML document, if you want to play with an XML tree, um, you need to do that somewhere between 800 and 900 because Plone Block is gonna make it an XML for you and then you can use XPAT and all your neat XML tricks to modify your output. Um, and then Plone Protect is gonna turn it back into a string for you before it goes out to the website. Um, caching, compressing, that's also also done in Transform Chain and the top 100 uh, in the thousands. So Plone Transform Chain has this order. As you see, there's a class property called order um, and that's where the actual transform engine is going to order all the transforms for you. And so setting that order is important of where you are. Um, and to show you a little bit of a demo of what RFA is doing with portal transform chain is that our, um, our web edit editorial um, uses um, in, in Arabic, they actually, for our Uyghur people, we actually have them input in Arabic and we transform that by alphabet into Latin and Cyrillic. Uh, we do the same thing with, um, with Chinese in our Cantonese service. We actually will have a button to say, I don't wanna see Cantonese simplified. I wanna see Cantonese traditional or back and forth. So our web team is only importing in one language, in one language alphabet. And we use portal transforms to just do some rules to, to say, hey, um, just take this letter of the alphabet and turn it into this. It's not that simple, but basically that's the concept is just take a, take a letter of the alphabet and turn it into another. So um, that's it for me. Um, if you, if you'd like to see any of this example code, um, I, it's available on our, our GitHub repository, Radio Free Asia RFA site. 
Um, this is a private repository for regulation reasons. Um, but just sending me an email and um, or sending me a Slack message or something like that just to say, hey, you know, can you add me? Um, I, there's no problem sharing this code. Um, we just have to keep it private so it's not available on search engines. So that's about it. Um, thank you very much. And I will be available in the GC. I think we have, what, 10 more minutes left? So um, I'm available for conversation in Jitsi after this. Thanks, Flip. That was a great dive into the transform chain. I had no idea all this magic was going on inside Plone. And it's great that you were able to excavate it for us and show us, uh, I guess, a safe route in and hopefully a safe route back out. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>